everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet this classic knit look beanie, which you can see here in the photo. I also have a couple of my sample ones here. Now this is a fairly straightforward classic looking crochet beanie. It features this uh, easy no bulk top. And uh, you'll find that the beanie is quite stretchy, so it's going to fit a variety of head sizes. You can wear it turned up like so. Here, I'll just pull back a little bit, turned up like that, or you can wear it long and a little more slouchy. It's uh, really up to you. So this is a beautiful fitting uh, knit looking beanie, but it is not knit. It is worked entirely of crochet stitches. So for this pattern, you're going to need a five millimeter crochet hook or an H8 crochet hook, and then some worsted or medium weight yarn. For my hats, I am using the Lion Brand Heartland yarn. It's 100% acrylic, medium worsted weight. You're going to need one ball to make the hat uh, so that it fits an adult head with a 20 to 22 inch circumference. So you'll need about 250 yards for this beanie. You'll also want to have on hand a copy of the free written pattern, which is on my website at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, while you're here, I invite you su to subscribe. Take a look around. You may want to check out the men's classic beanie or the easy winter beanie. Uh, if you like this style of hat, these are two other crochet patterns that you'll find in the crochet hat and headband playlist. So let's grab our hooks and yarn and get started. Our classic knit look beanie today is worked in rows. We're going to work this beanie from side to side, starting at the bottom up to the top, and uh, then in rows that way. So we're going to start by taking our yarn and making a slip knot, and then by working a fairly long foundation chain for the adult size, and this beanie is going to measure uh, about nine and a half inches tall, you're going to start by working a foundation chain of 53 stitches. There's 20, thirty, forty, fifty. And 53. Now if you would like a shorter beanie you are welcome to change the length of this foundation chain to the height of the hat that you desire. Now because slip stitches work up fairly tightly you are going to want to add a couple inches or at least one inch to your length in order to get it the proper size. So once you have your 53 chains worked you're going to begin row one by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row one, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Your chain one at the start of each row does not count as a stitch. We're now going to continue working this row and every single row after this you're going to be working in the back loop only. So to find the back loop only of your stitch looking at the top of your stitch you have this nice little V here. The horizontal bar closest to you is your front loop and the other one that's furthest away from you, this is your back loop. So when we're working these stitches, we're working in this back loop only. For row two, you've chained one and you've turned. You're now going to work in the back loop only and work a slip stitch into that first stitch 
and then slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. At the end of row two, you're going to chain one and turn your work. Now for row three, we're going to slip stitch working in that back loop only of the first stitch and each of the next 49 stitches. So work in the back loop only, slip stitch in that first stitch and each of the next 49 stitches, you'll have a total of 50 stitches and then two stitches remaining, but you're going to leave those remaining stitches unworked. So simply work a slip stitch in each of the first 50 stitches in total and then meet me back here. At the end of row three, you'll come all the way across and you'll have two stitches remaining. You're going to leave those remaining stitches unworked, chain one, and turn your work. Now for row four, you're going to work in the back loop only and simply slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. At the end of row four, you'll have a total of 50 stitches. You're going to chain one and turn your work. For row five, we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch, working in that back loop only, and then slip stitch in each of the next 47 stitches. At the end of this row, you'll have a total of 48 slip stitches and have two stitches remaining up at the top, which you are going to leave unworked. At the end of row five, you've worked 48 slip stitches, have two stitches remaining, chain one, turn your work, leaving those stitches unworked. For row six, working in the back loop only all the way across, slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you're going to have a total of 48 slip stitches. At the end of row six, chain one and turn your work. For row seven, working in the back loop only, slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each of the next 45 stitches. At the end of this row, you'll have a total of 46 stitches with two stitches remaining. Uh, you will chain one and turn your work, leaving those remaining stitches unworked. At the end of row seven, chain one and turn your work. For row eight, working in that back loop only, slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of this row, you're going to have a total of 48, 46 slip stitches. At the end of row eight, chain one and turn your work. For row nine, working in the back loop only, you're going to slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each of the next 43 stitches. So you'll have a total at the end of this row of 44 slip stitches with two stitches remaining.
at the end of row nine and you'll have two stitches remaining chain one and turn leaving those remaining two stitches unworked for row 10 working in the back loop only slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across at the end of this row you're going to have a total of 44 slip stitches At the end of row 10, chain one and turn your work. Now for row 11, slip stitch, working in the back loop only of that first stitch, and then into each of the next 41 slip stitches. At the end of this row, you'll have a total of 42 slip stitches. You can chain one and turn your work. At the end of row 11, you have two stitches remaining, chain one and turn your work. For row 12, working in that back loop only, slip stitch into that first stitch and then into each stitch all the way across. At the end of row 12, you're going to have a total of 42 stitches. At the end of row 12, you have 42 slip stitches, chain one, and turn your work. Now for row 13, we're going to switch up the pattern a little bit. Continue working in the back loop only, and you're going to slip stitch in the first stitch, and then in each stitch all the way across. So in each of your next, uh, to start, 41 stitches. You'll have a total of 42 slip stitches. We're working all the way up to the end of this row. In row 13, once you come all the way across and I've worked 42 slip stitches, you're going to do a little jump and into the, each of the next two stitches of row 10, you're going to work a slip stitch. In the back loop only again, insert your hook and work a slip stitch. You may need to pull this one a little bit tighter. Don't pull it too, too tight because you do want to leave space for your hook to work. And you're then going to slip stitch in the back loop only of the next stitch. You're then going to do another little jump and work a slip stitch into each of the next two stitches of row eight. Do another little jump, slip stitch in each of the next two stitches of row six. Slip stitch in each of the next two stitches of row four. And then slip stitch in each of the next two stitches of row two. You will then once again have a total of 52 slip stitches. You can chain one and turn your work. Now for the rest of the pattern, we're going to repeat rows 2 through to 13 for a total of nine more times. So your row 2 simply began with the slip stitch in the first stitch and then in the uh, each stitch all the way across and then you're going to work those short rows. So repeat rows 2 through to 13 for a total of nine more times. Uh, and then meet me back here. Now, if you are changing the size of your beanie, you don't have to work it for the total of nine times. Simply work to the desired circumference 
for your hat and then meet me back here. Once you have worked your repeat for a total of nine more times, this is what your hat is going to look like. You're going to have a fairly flat piece of fabric with a little bit of a curve up top. And when you fold it over, you're going to see that nice, smooth shape of your knit look beanie up at the top. We're then ready to work a slip stitch seam down the side of our hat. So you can take a look and decide which side you like best for your outside versus inside. They are fairly close, uh, so it may not matter too much, but you can just take a look at your hat. You'll want to have the wrong side facing when we work this seam. You're then going to, your yarn will still be attached, going to chain one and then taking your hat and working in the seam you're going along the two edges for the seam you're going to work into the back loop only of the first side and then across into your other side again in the back loop only and you're going to slip stitch through both thicknesses all the way across and down to the bottom. So in the back loop only of the first side, reach across back loop only of the second side and slip stitch. All the way across uh, your beanie, being careful not to skip any stitches or work twice in any stitches. You want a nice smooth seam worked all the way down the length of your beanie. Once you have slip stitched all the way down the side of your hat, you can then fasten off and go ahead and weave in that tail. You're then going to work and sew the top of your hat closed. Now before sewing the top of your hat closed, you'll want to make sure that the two of the decreases kind of line up. So I have my seam here and then I'm matching it with a decrease uh, seam over here. You're then going to take some yarn thread it through a yarn needle and join in any st stitch. I'm joining over here in my seam. Again, you should have the inside of your hat showing, so it should be the wrong side out. I'm just going to tuck in this tail here before I work a little knot to secure it. You're then going to sew through the top of your hat. It's up to you uh, as far as how you want to do that. If you want to go uh, in and out through the top, just as I'm going to do, going back and forth along that top straight line, or you can go around the outside edge as I've done in other beanies. Uh, it's really up to you. So I'm just working just a simple stitch all the way across. I'm working as close as I can to the top, making sure that I'm working through both thicknesses and working just in a little tiny bit because I don't want any of these threads to pull out, uh, just in a little tiny bit into the top of the hat. So sew all the way across. Once you come all the way across, you'll once again want to secure your yarn so fasten off again I'm going to use just a tight knot this is on the inside of our hat so it doesn't matter too much I don't want any bulk I want it to be fairly smooth 
but I need it to be secure as well. You can then go ahead and tuck in your end. Trim your end off. Go ahead and weave in any ends, uh, other ends that you might find. Along, I do have one more tail down at the bottom of my hat. You can turn your hat then right side out. You should have a nice, smooth, clean top up at the top, like so, and then down. Again, fold up your brim if desired or leave it long. It's really up to you, but that is how you work this classic knit look beanie. So thank you so much for joining me once again. Don't forget to subscribe if you happen to make this hat and share it on social media. Be sure to tag me, Rich Textures Crochet, and uh, I'll be sure to come by and admire it. So until next time, happy crocheting. Enjoy and bye. Mm -hmm.